Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. This is part 14 of the transformation of my XF Falcon into a tribute race car. So the video is leading up to this one. We've done all the paint work, we've done the racing stripes and all of that and now we're fitting the bonnet scoop onto the or a hood scoop. Uh, this is a Hornet style, Rambler Hornet style scoop here and uh, we're going to cut out a hole for it and we're going to glue it and screw it in place and also seal this back edge up there because it's it's made for a slightly different uh, shape bonnet with a bit of a curve on it so I'll show you how to seal it up so we're not going to get any water coming through so we're starting off there by measuring it in place so we started off by putting a couple of uh, uh, marks on the scoop itself and then we're measuring out the center of the bonnet or wherever you decide you want to put it. Some people like to put it off center and uh, put it directly over the carburetor, which may be in a different spot on some people's cars. And uh, now we're measuring in how far we need to cut the actual uh, hole out. So we've measured right around the outside and we've put the uh, uh, marker, just a whiteboard marker so it can be wiped off easily. We don't really want a permanent marker on there on my fresh paintwork. And uh, then we're measuring in and remarking. So uh, usually I would uh, decide to do something like this prior to painting. I would cut the hole out and make it so all I needed to do was glue and screw. But it turned out that I was actually waiting on the bonnet scoop for uh, another week uh, after I painted the car. It rocked up and then I had to do it after. So main reason is so that uh, when uh, you drill into the bonnet you're exposing some um, bare metal which could then rust up which we end up touching up and you also do run the risk of possibly scratching your paintwork which uh, if you're careful by putting these uh, this big thick black tape over it it should be okay and it turned out we didn't damage it so we drilled some pilot holes there first with a smaller drill bit and then we're using this big uh, big piece which will uh, bore it out to a bigger hole so that we can fit our uh, jigsaw into it. You can see there it's getting caught on the inner panel. And now we've got our jigsaw and we're just cutting around those lines. Try to keep it nice and straight. If you hang around to the end too, uh, I've also included some paintwork on the scoop itself too, so... Just cutting around that edge, I've got my mate helping me as you can see. It's good, a good idea when you're doing something like this, you, you sort of need two people. Just there, we're just trying to protect the, uh, the fresh paintwork from those sparks. With that blanket. And uh, this part here we needed to use the angle grinder on because it had the, um, the inner skin of the frame that we needed to uh, cut over and we didn't want to cut through too much of that frame or else you start losing the strength in the, in the hood itself. Pieces came out now and what I'm going to do next is spray inside all of their uh, so that we're, we're not going to have rust up and it looks nice too. Just putting a couple of pieces of paper over so we don't get overspray there. And I'm just using base coat here. I'm not going to put any clear coat there. Base coat's all I need. Blowing away some of that, uh, the glue. Just a bit of low pressure. We don't want paint all over the place. I'm just using that mini gun there. And that's only going to take a few minutes to drive just because it's base coat. So this is one method of putting the bonnet scoop in. There's different ways. Uh, uh, some of the guys on the, the race cars and stuff like that, they cut the entire hole out and then they have their hood pins and they can pull the uh, entire uh, bonnet off uh, and pull it up over the scoop, which actually goes directly onto the carby, the carburetor. So uh, that's one way of doing it, but I wanted something that's going to stick to the bonnet, directly onto the bonnet, and it still is a functioning scoop because the air is going to be flowing through there, through that hole, and getting into the engine. 
And I, I think I did notice a little bit uh, better performance. Not much, but, you know, it's a bit of breathing a bit better um, once I did do this too. And what we're doing here is these are the uh, holes for the screws. If you look on the inside of the bonnet scoop itself, this one that I've got has got screw holes as well. So we're not only relying on these screw holes, but we're also going to use some Sikaflex is the brand. It's uh, urethane, black urethane which is a high bond, high stick. Truth be told, it would probably hold in there just with the urethane, but I'd rather put the screws in just to be sure. And I'm just getting just a bit of touch-up paint, and uh, this is, as I mentioned before, just to stop the, uh, the bare metal from being exposed and possibly rusting up. Well, it will definitely rust up once the water hits it. And this stuff here, uh, it's not 100% necessary, but it's a good idea to use. It um, it helps the uh, Sikaflex uh, urethane bond to it. It's, it's a primer. There's no need to sand, uh, sand the surface prior because uh, it will stick. And then we've just got the Sikaflex here. It's actually a different brand that we're using here. Sorry, it's uh, Terrace and... Nice bead around there, and then we're just going to get the back ed edge of a razor blade to uh, smooth it out. This is where it helps having a couple of people. Make sure you line it up. You don't want to get it in the wrong spot, and then you're moving it around, and you get your urethane oozing too much out the edges. My mate's down underneath there, and he's got his uh, cordless drill, and he's putting the screws in. When you're putting those screws in, uh, put them in and you don't want to over tighten them because uh, you can actually end up uh, pinching the bonnet. The skin of the bonnet will actually start uh, warping if they're too tight. So you just need it just tight enough so they're biting. We then put the bonnet back on, which I thought I was recording. Uh, it turns out that I wasn't. So now the hood's sitting on its, uh, the scoop sitting on by itself. You can see this gap here at the back edge here. Um, uh, I've decided just to use some 4-in-1 sealer, uh, Terrason is the brand, it's uh, just a, a standard uh, seam sealer, this one, it's got a bit of flex in it, a bit of movement, it's not going to go completely hard, it's always going to keep a bit of movement in there, so we're then just pumping that right in there, and then I'm just going to use my fingers to wipe it in. I'd recommend wearing a glove, although I didn't, back in the, when I was making this video, I never used to protect my hands and uh, there's been a couple of uh, guys watching my videos and they are concerned for my health and uh, I've actually started wearing gloves when I'm painting and when I'm using these kind of materials so just wiping the excess off with a rag with a bit of wax and grease remover or prep sole or something like that I wouldn't want to go and use thinners on that fresh paintwork just a uh, light solvent like prep sole Going around, obviously, because we had the bonnet off, um, just touching up those bolts there. And then this is what we call pinch weld just here. Um, I'm sure it's got loads of different names around the world, but here in Australia we call it pinch weld. And it's just a little plastic strip that uh, just neat neatens up that edge. That's all it is. It just makes it look a little bit nicer when you open the bonnet up. And it does look quite neat when this thing's done. We're going to add some mesh into the front of it next up. That's inexpensive. I think it was only about 5 or $10 for that, that piece I got there. Most auto shops have it too. Uh, it turned out that we found some, um, some mesh just in the workshop that we'd pulled off some other cars, so didn't have to buy any, which was good. And now doing the paintwork on here because we've got that uh, exposed seam sealer. Just masking out just a little slit. I'm leaving the masking a tad off the edge and then I'm going to be using a false edge, what we call a false edge. So I'm getting a piece of thin tape, three quarter inch tape, and then flipping this edge over as you'll see here. Flip the leading edge over then run it out and the entire piece will have a false masking edge which we can then put across there and we won't be left with a big thick edge there once we paint over it. Now of 
I've got the base coat colour in my gun here, just spraying over it. It doesn't take very long to dry in between coats here. Just put a bit on, dry it off with the air in between coats, or a heat gun or something like that, and it won't take long at all to dry. Just put a couple of coats on there just to make sure it's covered. And next up we're going to be putting our clear coat on. So we're just giving the gun a quick flush through. And put some 2K clear in there that we had that I had sitting on the bench from earlier. I put a bit of uh, activator in it, some rocket, which just makes it dry a bit quicker. And now I'm putting that mesh in, just giving it a rough uh, idea of how the size I need, so I know uh, when I cut it out how much I'm going to need. And I'm just going to cut it to that size, which is obviously going to be too big if I cut it that size. And then after, I'll just bend the edges over and then slide it in from the inside. Uh, I tried putting some urethane on there, but it just didn't want to stick. It was making an absolute mess, and I gave up on it. And it turned out that it was um, it was pinching in on its own, uh, on its own, on itself. So it didn't end up needing any urethane in there. I just pushed it in from the inside and uh, got my hand right in from the inside and just pushed it uh, right forward. Decided that it needed. It wasn't sitting 100% right the first time, so I'm just bending those edges over just a touch more, and I'm pretty happy. There's a little corner there, it's sitting back a touch, but the rest of it looks quite nice. I'm, I'm overall pretty happy with how it came up. No water's going to be getting in there at the back, because I sealed it up, and the sides has, has got the urethane as well, so it looks nice and neat. And uh, next up, I'll uh, show you the clear coat of uh, when I was painting this as well. Uh, I've got loads of footage on this car and uh, I somehow I just lost, I don't know where it went, it could have been corrupted or something, but I lost the base coat colour and the sanding down of this hood scoop, so I'll just give you the footage on the clear coat. All I did for the base coat was just uh, two coats because this covers nice and quickly this colour and, and now I'm just putting the clear coat on. Using the Developers GDI Pro with the HVLP air cap on it. 1.3mm setup on this gun, just getting it on nice and wet, give it approximately 5 minutes in between coats and apply your second coat. I painted the inside as well but just did the inside in base coat and then just one coat of clear, two coats isn't necessary for the, uh, you don't need the durability on the inside there. Just got to be careful with these parts there with the internal angles that you don't uh, overload it because you can end up getting runs and prone to run in those kind of areas. And just on the top here, just getting it on really nice and even, nice and wet. This car came out real nice. I'm real happy with it. Off the gun finish, not much dust in it. There might have been one or two bits of dust that I can live with. Didn't end up polishing at all. So this is your car. Uh, it's actually a couple of months ago I made uh, this clip here. I haven't got around to making a more recent one. The only adjustments I've done to the car since it sits here is I've got the rocker cover uh, re chromed and you can hear that knocking sound there. Uh, that's actually an engine mount, so the engine, whole engine itself is pivoting. You see on the left there it's not, uh, moving around, so I've replaced that engine mount, got rid of that knock, and uh, it's uh, looking, looking a million dollars now, so take it down to the car shows and that and it's uh, always a bit of a popular car down there so the mighty Ford Falcon this was the most uh, built Australian Ford ever uh, 280 odd thousand of these XFs were built in Australia they went through for 1985 to I think it was 92 I think they went right through so, it's got a pretty nice interior in it, got a nice note to it too. Check out these vids, if you haven't already seen them, hit that subscribe button. There's a link to view my channel there as well, where I've got playlists. If you've missed out on some of the other videos, you can check out the playlist right from the start. And uh, thanks again for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.